Hello everyone and welcome back to my educational channel. I am excited to have you here for our fourth video in Python fundamental course. Today we are going to dive into a short but impactful session on topic Boolean data types in Python. I would like to remind you that if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any new videos that are added. Also, please share it with those who are eager in learning computer programming languages and mathematics. So, spread the knowledge. In Python, the Boolean, beta, uh, Boolean data type is a built-in data type that represents possibly the two values, true and false. So, let's say, let's go to the next slide and see what exactly the session objective. Session objective is going to be what? Boolean data type. And then, at the end, we'll see what exactly are we going to cover as a part of the next session. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, right, in Boolean, uh, so... In Python, the Boolean data type is a built-in data type. What does that mean? That is something which is provided as a part of the Python bundle itself. And that Boolean data type represents only two values. What are those two values? Either true and false, but not the third one. Okay. So whatever expression are going to give, that will either be evaluated to true or false, but not both. So Booleans are commonly used for what making decisions if this then that else this right that way let's say if you have the mm, marks right if you have the score which you have got in your exam and then on the basis of the score if you are going to decide what particular class you have got right if you have got marks more than 75 percent that means you got the distinction if you got a more than 60% that means you got first class. If you got more than 50% that is a sixth second class. If you got more than 35 and between 50 that is what third class and if you if you have received less than 35 that means what you failed. So how are you going to decide this? You will basically check whether that number is you will basically compare your marks with all these conditions and when you compare with all those conditions you will either get false or true and that will basically help us to decide what exactly the class you have obtained in your exam this was a simple example it so the boolean data type is also used in controlling the flow of a program through conditional statements like if else and then the loops as well like while do while for and all right okay now one more thing boolean values are also the kind of results of comparisons what we do logical operations we perform and the other conditional expressions the maybe the way I, I given an example earlier of the marks right and the deciding which class you have got in now some of the important use cases i've listed down here which we are going to look into the practically let's see which are those so we can basically compare the two numbers and get either true or false you can check whether check some condition in the condition statement like if else you can evaluate the values and the variables and there are like some cases where most of the time everything is true there are some cases where every time that will give you the false as a value check variable instance type whether it is an integer whether it is a float what is a str that way maybe and then uh not as of now if you don't remember if you don't know the functions that's fine but uh, just remember right function is something maybe which can return the value and there is something underscore underscore lane if we define on the object of a particular python class then when you try to operate some boolean function on that object it basically returns zero now the last two topics when i say function and so this two right the function and the class object these are something maybe you might not understand but you will understand this thing if you have already done the c programming and you will understand this thing if you have done some kind of object oriented programming already but that's fine as of now maybe right we can consider that thing let's go ahead and see right what exactly we have here right so what are we going to 
have right let's say maybe the first thing what we discussed comparing or let me just copy that from the slide itself right if I copy that from slide right So this was the slide and then maybe I'm just copying it out from there. Just give me a minute. Okay, I copied that. So these are the points right which we discuss. Now let's take one by one. Since we these are not the valid statements, we need to tell system that come consider these as what comments and when we want this as a comments we need to put a hash in front of each and everything right so let's look at first comparing the two numbers you can basically compare the two numbers let's say now you have the numbers x right let's say 23 and let's say y as what 45 now print let's say you can basically say x is greater than y okay see now what does this mean x is greater than y what does that mean 23 is greater than 45 is that true no 23 is less than 45 right so this will give you give us what false when you run this see this is going to give what a false correct but if you say 23 is less than y yes 20 x is less than y so 23 is less than 45 so when you run this you will get what true and when you say equal to equal to right it is going to give you false why because the numbers are not equal so this way you can basically compare the two numbers and then get either true or false value one thing you need to remember right uh the values boolean values what you are going to get those will be a case sensitive this will be true or false f and t are capital okay f and t are capital if you these are valid one these are the valid ones right and these are invalid which one are invalid true or false remember these are not the correct one because f and true are supposed to be what capital Okay, the first one now we got. Let's say second. You can basically have the condition which you can check. Let's say now uh, I I'm gonna say let's say 34, correct? And then y is equal to what 45. Now I want to basically check and print, right? See, now we are going to see if conditions in detailed in next, but as of now just assume if is the condition which basically helps to check the condition if i say x is greater than y right i can try to print as what x is greater than y and this style of printing we already saw if not this we can say lf what is that else if else it means what else if if it is if right you need to give the another condition if x is less than y you can just need to print it what x is less than y we are not looking at the if and else conditions as of now but just to tell you right where boolean is used this is one of the use case else is equal to y see now what this code does this code will first initialize x with 35 y with 45 34 45 if is the inbuilt reserved keyword right uh, it will check x is greater than y it will check so 35 greater than 45 no 34 greater than 45 no so it will not print this if this condition is true then only it will go inside and perform the operation but if this is not true then what it will do it will then go else if else so if this is not then else if 
x is less than y what does that mean it will check 35 less than 45 yes so this condition is true so in that case it will come here and say x is less than y yes so it will print what 35 less than what 45 and if both of the conditions doesn't mean what does that mean x is not less than y and x is also not greater than y what does that mean they are equal so x and y are equal let's see now we will try to print it see now 34 is less than 45 so here it came what if i change this to let's say 84 now x is greater than so it will say x is 84 is greater than 45 what if i change both to 84 84 now you both are equal see so both are equal now what what exactly does this mean this means that what the code right in if else conditions you will need to have a expression which will give you either true or false if it doesn't give a true or false then that is not the valid statement which you should put it inside the if understood that was the next part now let's say the next one evaluating values and the variables evaluating values and the variables either true true or false right so and it has basically two cases <clears throat> so most of the cases where the answer will be always true and the most of the cases where answer will not be, will be false let's go ahead with the one right so what does this mean when i say most of the cases when the time is well, most of the time the answer is going to be true so i mean any non empty any non empty variable any non empty variable will give or will, or will return bool function will return true from true from bool now what is a bool function bool function basically checks on the given data type or variable whether that is true or false now let's say for example if I say x is equal to what hi now x is what a string but if I try to print boolean x right so what this will do it will perform this function on the x it will check whether true or false and then it will print that now in case wherever whenever the value variable if it is assigned to something it will always return what true now see it written true now if you change this to any integer it will still give you what true a non-zero i mean okay if you change this to let's say some tuple three four five this is pythagorean tuple okay now if you try to print x it will again always give you what true let's say if you change it to set it will still give you the true if you change it to let's say dictionary right this is c this is b let's is a what does this mean a b c are the keys and three four five are value and then we are checking whether x variable means this variable it has the is not empty so it will basically go here right ah so this end syntax is wrong so how you will check you can basically check like this see you can see if boolean x right print x is defined x is assigned x is non-empty right rather non-empty but if that doesn't true right then what it will be print x is empty so instead of maybe printing the one one values right we'll take this way now let's say if you don't assign it to anything correct it will print its empty c so this was false 
and when false it came to else right you can have empty list as well so it will again give you what empty but if you just change that to write some values right it will give you non empty why because that given this is this is given as a true so that depends on like the variable which you are giving right it has the some value assigned or not if it doesn't have anything assigned then obviously it is going to return what false and if it has something it will going to return as what true understood then what will be the value for this what boolean is going to return you this will return false why because x is 0 and 0 means was nothing so this will be what false remember so this is the only condition where maybe that s x x is 0 and then it returns what false uh, similarly for the none as well okay when you say none it is empty right so that's how it is going to be. so this was when the case right when most of the time it is going to be true when it is non empty and most of the times it is going to be what false when it is empty so i'm just trying to print it here right so that any see so any empty variable will return false from the bool correct now let me just maybe comment out this part and then we'll go to the next one so what is next now so the next says check the variable instance type it's easy so let's say if you want to check whether it is integer or not right you can just maybe simply check it let's say x is equal to what 34 now print there is a inbuilt function is instance is instance is going to return you true or false what it is going to check x and into what does that mean it will check this function will check whether x is the variable of type integer and if it is of type integer it will return true if it is not it will return false now in this case 34 is integer so it should print true is it true but if i just change this 34 to 34.0 it, it is going to be false why because now this is a float type okay now if i change this to let's say string it will again going to be false why because the string doesn't count to what integer good so this is how right you can use is instance of operator and then there it basically returns true or false now the next use case what we have a function can return a boolean now what the, does that mean see you might not have studied until the functions in python but yes if you have studied the c language or c plus plus language you should be familiar with the function but even if don't you don't know right just maybe forget about it right now and then we'll cover that in details when we will be looking in the function topic now what exactly the function here means okay now let's say if i define some function if you want to define the function you need to reuse the uh, keyword def if i say if i define the functions r r equal correct when i say r equal what it is going to check this function r equal function will take two input parameters r equal function will take two input parameters and will give output whether it is what they are equal or not so how you will check if x is equal to equal to y we are going to what return true else return false see now we may skip else from here why because if we skip the else it is doesn't going to make any sense why because when it returns from here right when return 
statement comes to the function it goes back to the calling function from the same point itself it really doesn't have to do anything with the this one so now see so if we can just maybe try to print right if so x is equal to what let's say 23 y is equal to what 34 right and then print uh will maybe try to print it right x or like this let's say yeah uh x equal to equal to y is true or false so what it will be r equal but we are going to give us x and y now how it will print it will print if it is 23 23 equal to equal to 34 is it will call this function it will go here r equal 23 will be stored into x 34 will be stored into y and then 34 is is equal to 20 23 is equal to, equal to 34 no so this will not be executed and rather this will come to here it will return false and this will be replaced with what false so what will be printed 23 equal to equal to 34 is what false let's see see so 23 is equal to equal to 34 is what false you can try giving the same numbers now what it will do it will go there and it will execute this part why because it found the match see it's true is it so that's how it is going to be so what did i do here I basically called the r equal function with these two parameters. Function means what? Function means a kind of box. Function is what kind of box which gives 1, 2, 3, 4 number of any number of inputs. These are called as what? Inputs. And it basically gives one output. Okay. Now in this case, it will give the output as what true or false. And what we are going to give, we are going to give the inputs as what x, y. What it will check, x equal to equal to y. Correct. Now if they are equal, it will provide true. If they are not equal, they will, it will provide false. Remember, that's how it is going to be. Right. So let me just rub down this now. I will rather comment it out. Once we comment out this right, we'll go to the next one. So it's very easy. You just need to maybe understand what are you going to use and what are you not. Now, this might not be a good place to talk about it because the classes is kind of maybe object-oriented Python programming which comes into the advanced Python but just to maybe understand right what exactly the boolean data type is used in in terms of Python classes here it is so let's say if I define my first my first Python class see now I'm I'm writing first Python class if in this python class if i override this function len will will come to know what self means self means it is a pointer to the object the self object which will be calling this function right so self if i say return zero then whenever we create an object of this it will basically give us a null now how it will be let's say my first python object correct now my first python object if i say boolean or my obj
what are you doing here we are just maybe creating an object creating an object nothing else right so when we create an object this function gets called with the length right now the length of this object is going to be what zero so when we try to print it right print boolean my first python object it will give a zero or it will give a false why because it is a the length function which talks about its true or false conditions it gives zero so it is false if you just maybe change it to some number four it will give you true why because it's non-zero number true see so this is what actually we had it from this particular session so and this is how you can use a boolean python data type okay so boolean values are also commonly used in loops functions which return values and the data filtering and it's important to remember that capitalization matters in python i already talked about it right capital t it should be what capital t true and false you should stick to this if you change the case if you make it small t small f it is not going to work okay so that's what actually we had let's let go back to our presentation yeah so we we discussed these all the things what exactly we have in a boolean data so guys if you like the video just make sure that you click on the like button comment into the video uh, comment put your comment into the section that you like the video and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you will get notified about all the new videos which i'm going to upload as a part of next thing in this series and much more on the computer programming side and the mathematics also make sure that you share this video link or my channel link with the rest of the e people who are really eager to learn more on the computer languages side and the mathematics side so and the next video we will be covering python operators so guys please do not forget to like subscribe and share i wish you happy learning with the gravitech thank you